Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ETS 2B. It's on the influence of science, engineering, and technology on society and the natural world. Wow, that's a mouthful. And this is also the last video. It's the last video of the next generation science standards that I've made, um, taking a look at the framework. I hope it's been beneficial to you. I know for me, I have a better understanding of how the foundation works. And so I want to show you how STEM, in other words, science, technology, engineering, and math, are impacting the world. And so let's take a look at this. This is a picture of the lights on the Earth. And so you can see where there are areas of high lights at night and low lights. And so this is a NASA image. Now it doesn't show you where there's high population because if you look right here, we've got lots of lights, but it's clearly going to be more population if we were to look to China or India. But it does show where we have a high amount of technology. And so if we look at the world population, let's see how that's changed over time. So in this graph, let me show you what we've got. We've got world population on this side. This would be 7 billion right here. And this is current day. So we're right here and this is the last 12,000 years. So if I of animate that graph let's take a look at it so this is what the population has been over time and it's really taken off recently and so we've seen exponential growth um, this if I remember right is agriculture that's why we see human population taking off here and this is going to be that industrial revolution that's why it really takes off and so the world population is growing and as it does that it's going to require more natural resources from the earth itself and also as we add science and technology things like agriculture, transportation, medicine, housing, and energy are all going to have direct impacts, impacts back on the earth itself. And so as we choose new technologies, we have to make sure that we're weighing the costs and the benefits, but also we have to be looking out for risks. And so global warming is an example of that. Climate change is going to be something that we're going to have to deal with in the future. And so how do we look at costs, benefits, and risks of something that hasn't happened? Well, mathematical models help out. We can use mathematical models to predict what's going to happen in the future and then make wise decisions based on that. Because if we look at this, science and engineering, as I've shown you, are going to impact society. In other words, as we get new advances, it's going to impact ourselves. It's going to impact us. But also, it goes both ways. We can impact science and technology as well through regulation. And so let me give you an example. I live near Salt Lake City, and we like to go down there in the winter and go skiing. And it's a beautiful city. It's right up against the Rockies. It's gorgeous. But one thing I've noted over the last few years is it's got smoggier and smoggier. They have awful air pollution in Salt Lake City. And it's a product of technology, more people, more industry, but also their geography is kind of a bummer where the wind blows right up against the Rockies. And so they're going to have to make some decisions, regulation to science and technology if they want to get rid of that as a problem. So what's the teaching progression? How do we teach this in our schools? Well, in the lower elementary grades, we want to start talking about technology and how technology is wonderful. It touches every part of our life and it makes our lives better. But also you want to emphasize that all technology that we have requires natural resources. And as we pull those from the earth, we're impacting the earth itself. As we move into the upper elementary grades, we want to talk about how engineering and science change over time. And so the engineering designs and the technology that we have today, for example, this is the most popular car on the planet, the Ford Focus, um, is it's going to work today but we had a totally different design. This is a 57 Chevy back in the past. And so that was a good solution for back then. And in the future, the Ford Focus is gonna look outdated. Uh, safety outdated, um, its fuel supply is gonna remain outdated. And so as time changes, our engineering solutions change as well. As we move into middle school, we wanna talk about not only time is going to affect engineering and science and technology, but also place where you are on the planet. And so the solutions here in the United States are going to be different than those in a different country at a different time. And so what we have to do is we have to locally weigh those costs, benefit, and then put those against the risks. And so as we move forward into high school, we want to talk about science and engineering and how they're going to impact society. But in the future, we may have to have society impacting science and engineering. Let me give you an example. Last summer, I visited China and I went to Shanghai and I went up in the top of this building, you go way up in the top, I think it's the second tallest building uh, in the world, and you see all of this technology, you see all of society around there, and so as we're doing that, we're impacting the earth itself, and eventually, as we start to get consequences that we don't like, we're going to have to use regulations to mediate science and engineering, but the nice thing about that is that there are going to be solutions for a lot of the problems that we have. 
So that's the last video, kind of ties everything we've talked about through this whole thing, and I uh, hope that really was helpful.